Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We have tons of fun here on this channel talking about beauty and makeup and today I want to take it back to the basics here on my channel and do more comprehensive beginner friendly type content geared towards people that are just starting out in makeup you know you're just dabbling into makeup or maybe you're getting back into makeup after a few years and you're trying to navigate the lay of the land which has changed so much in the last few years there's so many different brands and types of products and how you use them so maybe you're approaching it that way or there's someone in your life that's newer to makeup and you're trying to help them on their makeup journey and you just want to pass on some tips and tricks to them and that's what i'm hoping these videos can help with to be your guide through this massive makeup world as we know it today i'm hoping to pass on tips and tricks and techniques that you can incorporate in your everyday makeup routine suggest products to build your core makeup collection so you can get the best bang for your buck and get products that suit your preferences and will help you to enjoy makeup right because at the end of the day that's what it's all about so in this video I am going to suggest products to build again a basic solid makeup collection and this can be for a beginner that's just getting started in makeup or for someone that already has like a small collection going but you want to build on that so you can have a little bit more fun with makeup so if that sounds interesting to you and you want to hear my suggestions for building a basic core makeup collection then let's go ahead and jump right into it all right, first things first, this is the very first question I ask anyone that asks me for makeup suggestion. What is your skin type? This is critical information because it will help you to select the products that you're going to build your collection with. So what's your skin type? Do you know what a skin type is? Look at your skin. Look at your skin right now, bare face, freshly washed. What are we looking at here? Do you have normal skin? You're like, what's normal skin? So normal skin is exactly what you're thinking. It's normal, there's nothing extreme about it. You don't get super oily throughout the day. If you're oily, you know what oily is. So your T-zone, which is the center of your forehead, your nose, your chin, and the sides of your nose, like right by your cheek area, under your eyes, that doesn't get oily or greasy. Your pores are not visible. So you don't see large pores around your T-zone. You're not acne prone, your skin isn't sensitive. You have an easy life. This is the easiest skin type to navigate because you can pretty much use most skincare for your skin type. You can use a simple face wash, simple makeup cleanser, and you're good to go. Oily skin, which is what I have, is where I get oily, okay? I get greasy. If I wash my face within two hours, all over my face, I'm secreting sebum everywhere. And you can feel the oil on your skin. If you have oily skin, like I said, you're going to know. It literally looks like you can fry chicken on your face. It literally looks like there's an oil slick on your face. That's what oily skin is. And as much as I might bitch and moan about having oily skin, I actually like having oily skin because oily skin ages better. However, you will have and large pores which i do have around my t-zone area and my nose gets extremely oily oh my goodness so i have to worry about enlarged pores and making sure my pores are clean and i have to use primers and mattifying products so again something to think about when you're purchasing your products and reading different labels so that's oily skin and then we have dry skin right and it's what it sounds like it's dry skin not to be confused with dehydrated skin but you have similar problems so dry and dehydrated skin your skin just feels dry, all right? It just can't get enough moisture. It may feel tight, and we've had that experience, right? I have dry hands. It feels tight, it can feel uncomfortable. You can have flaking and redness, and you'll have emphasized fine lines. That's why I said oily skin is kind of fun to have because my skin always looks plump, but I have to contend with the oil. With dry skin, 
lines and wrinkles are a little bit more accentuated you just oh my god you just need moisture but the good thing is your pores might not be as accentuated so you don't have to worry about like filling in pores but then you have to worry about flakiness and fine lines and so on so you want to make sure your skincare involves a lot of hydration so keep that in mind and then you have combination skin which is just what it sounds like it's a combination of the other skin types so you may have normal combination skin where your t-zone is extremely oily and then the perimeter of your face is normal you may be a combination of oily dry where you're oily in some spots and dry and flaky in other spots and then you have to navigate that whole scenario okay so you have to balance out your skin and then mixed in between all of that is acne prone skin. So you're prone to breakouts and that can happen for any of the skin types, all right? It's not just oily skin. Normal skin can be acne prone as well because acne as we know is not simply a skin condition. It can be a multitude of things that affect acne prone skin. If you have really bad acne, go to a dermatologist. They're gonna be the best bet to recommend products for you don't take my advice, all right? Maybe you even have sensitive skin. So sensitive skin is another one of those. Again, it doesn't matter what your skin type is, dry, normal, or combination, oily. Listen, sensitive skin is sensitive skin. It means your skin is easily irritated. You may have a lot of redness. You may get rashes. All that, you have to be mindful of the products that you put on your skin. I am not like the expert on skincare, but knowing your skin type is going to help you to choose your products, to choose your moisturizer, your cleanser, your makeup remover, all your actives, all that stuff. You'll have to navigate that with a skincare specialist or a dermatologist. So once you figure out your skin type, we can now dive into building your makeup collection because a few of the products that you select will be specific to your skin type and your needs. And I'm going to recommend products that are combination oily and normal skin friendly. I am not the expert at dry skin because I don't have dry skin. So you're going to have to tailor your needs if you have dry skin. So at the very core of a makeup collection is a basic skincare routine. Don't ask me any questions, this is a fact. You need a basic skincare routine. And like I said, this is going to be beginner friendly so we're not going to dive into all the actives and the serums and all that. We're just talking about a basic skincare routine. You can add to that as you see fit, but there are four products that I think are pretty basic and standard for any skincare routine. The first one up is a makeup remover, all right? A makeup remover. If you're gonna wear makeup, you need a makeup remover. I'm not asking you this, I'm telling you this. You need a makeup remover. I made the mistake of thinking just a regular cleanser is sufficient. No, it's not. The first step is to actually cleanse the makeup off your skin and that needs a separate cleanser. So makeup cleanser, number one. Number two is a second cleanse, which is a face wash, all right? I, you'll probably hear people talk about second cleanse. Let me make it basic for you. Simple words, it's a face wash, all right? So the second cleanse, face wash. All right, third is a moisturizer that is suitable for your skin type. I have oily skin, so I navigate towards a lightweight moisturizer. If you have drier skin, normal skin, you can use like heavier, thicker cream moisturizers. But for me, I like a lightweight moisturizer. And then fourth, sunscreen. Sunscreen is critical, it gets drilled into our heads, but it's critical to maintain the integrity of your skin. So those are the four basic products. Again, there are different serums and actives and nighttime and daytime and all, mm, we're not getting into that. We're talking about the four basics. Now, as I mentioned, my recommendations are going to be centered around my skin type, which is oily, sometimes oily combination. So these might not necessarily work the best for your skin type, especially if you have drier skin. You'll have to tailor these to your specific needs. But there's some products that can still cross over for all skin types. And this first one is one that I think will work for any skin type, any age. I just think this is such a perfect product. And I feel comfortable saying that because it's a pricey product, but I wouldn't recommend it unless I believed in it 100%. And that is my cleansing oil. So remember I said your first step should be a makeup cleanser. 
And makeup cleansers take different forms. They can be a cleansing balm, which is like a solid product that melts on application to the skin and it will break up the makeup on your skin. You also have micellar water, like Bioderma has some, Neutrogena has some, Garnier. You can find them in the drugstore. These micellar waters, again, remove makeup. But I think the best, the ultimate best, is a makeup cleansing oil. Okay, and my recommendation is a pricey one. However, it will last you a long, long time. All the makeup cleansing balms that I've tried, the micellar waters, all those get knocked out of the water by this cleansing oil and this lasts longer. So I actually get value for my money here. Even though that purchase hits you real hard, I'm telling you, it will last you months and months and months. I think this is, yeah, I'm like, a third of the way through and I opened this this year so that goes to show you this is gonna last me like a full-on year sometimes more than a year so this is from Shurmore It's the pore finish 2 Sakura refreshing cleansing oil one pump is all you need and that's why I say it will last you a long time because those cleansing bombs you have to use so much those micellar waters you have to use so much plus they're using like a cotton pad and all that to remove your makeup when all you need is one pump of this oil a little goes a long way you may use a pump and a half maybe two depending on how heavy your makeup is that day but one pump pump it in your hand dry face cleanse your makeup off you're gonna get off waterproof makeup long lasting makeup sunscreen the works all right pricey purchase you can get it on sale and one will last you a whole year if you just use one pump you don't need a lot of it like i said so don't overdo it don't overuse it you may be kind of tempted to because other cleansers on the market require you to use so much product so you have to keep repurchasing them this one one pump and done and it removes everything nothing has ever stayed on my face after I use that cleanser I've never had an issue liquid lipsticks long wearing eyeliners waterproof makeup it all comes off with this oil cleanser I'm telling you right now first step invest in this now don't ask me any questions number one all right and I'm saying this with full confidence no hesitation number one so once you apply that, right, again, dry skin, do not wet your skin, do not wet your hands, dry skin, boom, boom, boom. Remove your makeup, and then you wanna go in with your second cleanse. Your second cleanse, honestly, it can be whatever you're comfortable with because that makeup cleanser is going to take care of the makeup part. So your second cleanse is really to remove the residue of the makeup and to remove the balance of the oil, all right? Because once you wash your skin, you kinda still wanna get like a second cleanse in. And what I would recommend that I've been enjoying, this is from the drugstore, well, it's drugstore. It's from the brand Peach Slices, which is the little sister brand of Peach and Lily, so it's a lower price point. This is their oil control balancing cleanser. This has some actives in it, and I've been enjoying this so much. It's great for oily skin. It foams up really nicely without drying out the skin. It's $14.99, and you can use your coupon to get a discount on this. So this one, highly recommend. But again, you're going to choose a cleanser that suits your needs. Some people prefer a cream cleanser that's a little bit more hydrating. This is the step you can kind of navigate yourself and figure out like a good cleanser for you. You can try different ones. But if I had to recommend one that's a great price point, it would be this Peach Slices Cleanser. We also have different cleansers from Derma E that are more affordable as well. I recommend those from Derma E. And again, there's so many different ones on the market that you can try out at the price point that best fits your wallet. All right, next is moisturizer. Again, this one is going to depend on your skin type, but if you have oily skin and you just want a lightweight moisturizer like I do, I want something quick, easy, lightweight, I recommend the Make Beauty Succulent Skin Gel Cream Moisturizer. This is excellent. It is such a good gel cream. It's lightweight, it keeps your skin hydrated and it feels comfortable without being greasy or heavy and it lays well under makeup. So this would be my recommendation. It's just the best one I've tried, but I've tried so many different gel moisturizers on the market that are excellent. I don't think you need to break the bank for this. Neutrogena has a Hydro Boost line that works really great for oily skin. That is another recommendation from the drugstore that's not too pricey. 
and it works really great. These are products that I've tried and I know and I love. So this is where, again, it has to suit your needs and your budget. Like, what are you looking for in a moisturizer? But this would be my recommendation. All right, sunscreen, again, very personal. And if I'm honest with you, I haven't found a sunscreen that I absolutely 100% love and recommend. I just have so many different ones that I try out throughout the day. I really don't have one that I would recommend. I really hate sunscreen, if I'm being honest with you. I really hate sunscreen. I don't like sunscreen at all. I don't like the feel of it. It's just a little bit too heavy on my skin and I haven't found like the perfect match. But I highly recommend a sunscreen because otherwise I wouldn't be a good beauty influencer if I said skip sunscreen. Don't skip it. But this one, I'm going to leave it up to you to figure that one out because I ain't got one for you. All right, now that we have the skincare out of the way, let's talk about the actual makeup. Oh my goodness. I want you to build a core skincare routine first, but the fun part begins with the makeup, right? What are my recommendations for the makeup? All right, figure out where you want to get started. That's the next step. Where do you want to go with this? Like, what are you looking for when it comes to makeup? Now, I think the very first true makeup product that most of us start out with is a mascara. And I say true makeup product because I don't really consider your little lip gloss or your lip balm, you know, your little chapstick or your lip smackers to be like a true makeup product because just about everybody will wear that even as a kid. But your true makeup product, when you start like diving in, is mascara, right? Because you want to amplify those lashes unless you're wearing eyelash extensions, which a lot of people seem to be doing these days. But we're talking about basic, basic, all right? So you would start out with a mascara and there's so many options on the market. There's so many drugstore options. And my top recommendations from the drugstore would be like the signature OG mascaras, CoverGirl Lash Blast, mm-hmm. And then L'Oreal Carbon Black Voluminous Mascara. These two mascaras are like OG. Your mama, your grandmother probably use these. These are like tried and true. Highly recommend them. I love them. I had them starting out and I had no issues. Love these mascaras. And mascaras are kind of tricky to navigate as well because it depends on your lash needs. Are you into like full voluminous lashes? Do you need length? Do you need curl? Like what are you looking for? And the mascaras will tell you what they do, right? We volumize, we lengthen, we curl, all that. You can read it, but you're sure to get your fix out of Lash Blast and Carbon Black from L'Oreal. CoverGirl, L'Oreal your go-to for mascara in the drugstore. But my recommendation, and I'm gonna say this right now, drugstore is cute. It's a great price point for the most part. Some of them are getting pricey, but for the most part, drugstore is gonna be more budget friendly, right? But I think you're going to get more bang for your buck with a mid-range brand. As much as it may cost you a little bit more, I think you'll get more quality out of a mid-range brand. So for me, my recommendation for mascara is my number one right now, Amico Lay, okay? This is the Amico Lay Lash Amplifying Volumizing and Lengthening Mascara. It's $19, so it's a little bit steeper than a drugstore mascara because CoverGirl, I believe, is like $12.99 and then the L'Oreal mascara is like $10.99 and again, you can use coupons. So you can get a good price point for these, but this, Highly recommend, get it during the Sephora sale. You'll only get like 10% off because you're just starting out, so you don't really have too much going on at Sephora with points, but this is really good. It's an excellent mascara. I've had nothing but great results. I highly recommend this mascara, mid-range brand. I'm just saying, but any one of these options would be fantastic. And then where do you go from there depends on you, right? And I say this because I had a weird makeup journey. I started with eyeshadow first, <laughs> like full on eyeshadow before I did foundation, before I did blush, bronzer, all that. I went head first into eyeshadow. So that may not be your journey. Maybe you're doing complexion first because you think you need to even out your skin. Maybe you have acne and you wanna, you know, cover up some blemishes and so on. But for me, it was eyeshadow. So I'm not going to do this in any particular order because it depends on what you're into. So I'm just gonna start out from the top down. Brows, brows, oh my God. Unless you have tattooed brows or you were just doing the fluffy brow thing, 
brows frame the face and they will complete a makeup look I feel like if your brows aren't done it won't complete your makeup look but that's just me maybe you think differently and that doesn't mean you have to sculpt your brows and do the most it doesn't mean that I do the most because you know I love a proper brow but that doesn't necessarily mean that for you so there are various different things you can do for your brows but the easiest is a brow gel right grab a brow gel fix your brows in place the recommendation that I have for a brow gel to hold your brows in place in case they're like unruly, you just want to sculpt the brows and make sure they lay just right. The Sephora Shape and Set Clear Brow Gel. This is $12 and when Sephora has sales, they have 30% off their products. So you can get this for under $10. And I think this is such a great brow gel. Now I've tried other brow gels from the drugstore, L'Oreal, CoverGirl, e.l.f., all of them, NYX. I don't like those. They've never just given me what I needed and I feel like the Sephora one is worth checking out. They have this clear option that I'm showing you now, but they also have tinted versions that you can try out. And I think they just make quality brow products and they're more affordable than the other brands at Sephora and they are worth the money because the quality is there. So if you wanted a brow gel, I'm just saying Sephora brow gel is the way to go. But again, there's some in the drugstore. I just don't mess with them because I don't think they're that great quality. And I think it's worth it to spend a couple of dollars more to get a better quality rather than struggle through a drugstore option just because it's cheaper. You know what I'm saying? All right. Maybe you want a little bit more than a brow gel. Maybe you need to fill in some sparse areas. You're into the filling. My recommendation, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, they're gonna be pricier because again, the drugstore options that I've tried, they make do, they, they can work. But if I had to recommend my favorites, I have two. The Make Beauty Blade Line. This is a little bit pricier, but it's worth it, you know? And I would recommend you get a brow pencil with a spoolie end so you don't have to get a separate tool. So you have a spoolie on one end and then your brow pencil. And depending on what you're going for, you may want a wider pencil like the blade line, which I think actually works really well to fill in brows quickly unless you want precision, which I feel like that's not a beginner friendly thing, you know? With brows, you just wanna go whoop, 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 done. And I think a wider brow pencil is the way to go. Make Beauty has my favorite brow pencil in this style, which is the wider blade type. I love this. And again, they have sales all the time. You can get 25% off, 20% off, 30% off, depending on the time of the year. So I would recommend getting this on sale along with your moisturizer to make it worth it. But these two products from Make Beauty, love them. The other one that I have that I pulled out, I was going to mention it, but now I'm rethinking it. I love it. All right. This is the Patrick Ta Major Brow Defining Pencil. This is pricey. So you know what? I take it back. I don't necessarily recommend this, but... If you're looking for precision and you wanted to do like fine strokes through the brows, you can't go wrong with this one. It's pricey, but it's so good. It makes really thin brush strokes and it's excellent. But apart from that, I would go with the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. Benefit brow pencils, you can't go wrong. They're excellent, they're really good, and sometimes you can get them on sale for half off. So keep an eye out for brow pencils when they go on sale. That's the best time to get them. And if you're in a pinch, Sephora also has a great brow pencil that's a fine point brow pencil. But with your brow pencil, it depends on your brow needs. Maybe you don't need a lot. So you can skip brow pencil and just stick to brow gel. When you get into brow pomades and brow powders and all that, I think that's a little bit more advanced. So just stick to brow pencil, which is easy, and a little brow gel. Done. Easy. All right, this one is a little bit of an unpopular opinion, it seems. A lot of people don't use an eyeshadow primer, and I'm just like, why? What? And I mean, their makeup looks turn out fine but they don't look that good to me, okay? Because you're missing a key step, eyeshadow primer. You need one. Don't talk to me about whether or not you need one. You need one. I don't care if you have dry lids, oily lids, whatever. An eyeshadow primer changed the game for me. I was doing eyeshadow. Like I said, I jumped into eyeshadow right away. I was doing my little woo, -woo, -woo 
and the minute I discovered eyeshadow primer, my life changed. My life changed. My eyeshadow applied so much more effortlessly. I had more pigmentation. I had more control. I had more longevity. It just looked better. Okay, so I'm not even suggesting this. I'm telling you, you need an eyeshadow primer. If you're going to wear eyeshadow, get yourself an eyeshadow primer. And the one I recommend, again, is from Sephora. This is the Boost and Lock eyeshadow primer. They have ones at the drugstore. Again, I don't think those are great. They'll function just fine, but if you really want a good one, the eyeshadow primer from Sephora slaps. This is the Boost and Lock. I think it's 10 or $12. Again, you can get it on sale. Stop playing with me. The Sephora sale is coming up. So this is like preemptive for you. Make your list, check it twice, figure out how you're gonna navigate these sales if you're building your collection. Sephora collection boost and lock eyeshadow primer. Yes, absolutely, hands down. All right, here's probably the trickiest product to navigate, eyeshadow. Oh my God, so you have your eyeshadow primer, your mascara, all the things. What about eyeshadow? You wanna tiptoe into eyeshadow? tiptoe on the neutral side of things. It's the easiest thing to try out. You can use these products every day. They're easier, they're simple. You can practice and improve your techniques before you dive into more colorful shades. But a neutral eyeshadow palette is your best bet. And you can start out with a quad. So if you're starting out with an eyeshadow palette, here's what you need to look for. You need to look for a transition shade. A transition shade is gonna be a shade that's similar to your skin tone. So make sure your palette includes a shade that matches or is very close to your skin tone. You'll need a deepening shade and that's gonna vary based on the depth of your skin. I have darker tan skin, so I need a richer, darker brown than somebody that's pale that can get away with probably my transition shade as their deepening shade. But that's how you wanna look at it. You want a transition shade that matches your skin tone, a deeper shade for darkening and creating definition. These are gonna be matte shades, right? Then you want a lighter shade for an inner tear duct highlight. And that can be a shimmer shade, it can be a satin, it can be a matte whatever your preference is, and then a fun shade for the lid. And you can choose a palette that has a variety of that, or again, choose a quad. So you'll have a light shade for highlighting under your brows, inner tear duct, deepening shade for your crease and to create definition, maybe use as a liner, and then your crease shade, which is gonna be your blend and transition shade, and a fun shimmer shade. And that's it, four shades, right? The recommendation that I have for a neutral palette I think is one of the best eyeshadow palettes, best neutral eyeshadow palettes that have hit the market. It's the Coffee Shop palette from Juvia's Place. Look at this. Look at it, oh my God. So I have my light shade, right? I have some fun shimmer shades. This is one shimmer shade for the inner tear duct. I have another shimmery shade that can be used as a highlighter shade, but then I have these other shimmer shades I can use on the lid then darken in shades with different undertones so I can go cool, I can go warm. My transition shades are all here. So you see these mid-tone browns, cooler neutral, warmer shades, more warm shades. So I can navigate this palette and create a variety of looks and have fun with it. This palette, highly recommend, and it's a good price point. So Juvia's Place. Juvia's Place is getting a lot of mentions in this video because I feel like they are top notch. I feel like they make quality products and you get a bang for your buck because they're not too expensive. They're not the cheapest in the drugstore, but they're not too expensive. For eyeshadows, I don't recommend NYX, ELF, L'Oreal, CoverGirl. I don't recommend any of them. If I'm honest with you, no, I don't recommend them. Even ColourPop is pushing it. I know, but ColourPop is probably another good option to try palettes from. ColourPop has some decent eyeshadow palettes. I feel like it's too hit and miss with the other brands and you're going to waste your money because again, you're gonna spend your money on products, you're not gonna get the best quality and then you're gonna be like, oh, I wanna try something else. Just go for something that's good quality right out the gate. You can also try little palettes from the Sephora collection. Again, Sephora is gonna be one of those brands that I mention a lot because I feel like the Sephora collection has quality products in there, all right? And you can get a full makeup collection over there from eyeshadows to primers to complexion products, mascaras, everything. You get it over there, all right? So that's my recommendation for eyeshadow, but I feel like eyeshadow is so personal, 
but a good neutral is gonna be your starting point. I think the next step is to really do a base of makeup. So let's talk about concealer and foundation. I would say try out a concealer before you start diving into foundation. I consider a concealer to be like a multifunctional product. It can double as a foundation and a concealer. So I can get more coverage or I can use it all over, which is why I'm saying start with concealer first and again, I'm going to recommend the one from Sephora. This is the best skin ever. It's their full coverage multi-use concealer, has a natural finish. They have an excellent shade range, top notch, recommend this. Again, it may be a little bit pricier than your NYX or your e.l.f., but this concealer, excellent. And again, quality is there, the shade range is there. You don't have to worry about whether you're gonna have a good shade match. You're going to find one here, all right? And I'm almost putting that on the line by saying that. But in the drugstore, the shade ranges can be spotty. You may not find a great formula. It may not work for you. And you're gonna spend more money trying to find something that works for you rather than spending a few extra dollars and getting a great quality concealer with a great shade range. And you don't have to be testing all these different ones. This one, excellent. It's so good. I love it so much. Definitely highly, highly recommend. Great shade range, great price point, and Sephora sale 30% off. All right, let's talk about foundation because that's like the next step up. You've done concealer, so you use your concealer under your eyes, any darkness, you have some hyperpigmentation you wanna cover up, you just wanna even out your skin tone. So you're like, boom, 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 I've used my concealer, but now I wanna bump it up. Do I wanna do foundation or do I wanna do skin tint? All right, here's the thing. There's so many options on the market right now that go up in coverage. So you can start out with a light coverage product and bump your way up. I really think the best coverage for anyone is a medium coverage because you can share it out and get a lighter coverage or you can use it at the full medium coverage, right? And go from there with your concealer to build up coverage. So for your foundation, I'm going to recommend again the Sephora collection. Here we have it, it's the best skin ever foundation from Sephora, matches up with the concealer. Again, great shade range, I think this is $20. Again, you can get it on sale. So it's only a couple of dollars more expensive than a drugstore foundation because these drugstore foundations have gone all the way up in price, okay? So this would be my number one. However, there are drugstore foundations that are cute. They work really well, such as the NYX Bear With Me Blur Foundation. I think this is a good one. You can also find your way over to Ulta and grab a Juvia's Place foundation. Their new I Am Magic Natural Radiance foundation is actually a really good one if you can stand the scent. It's highly fragranced, but it's a good little foundation. This is a little heavier coverage though, so just be mindful of that. We also have skin tints. The Amico Lace Skin Tint, I really enjoy. Limited shade range though, but I think this is so excellent when it comes to a skin tint and just getting used to having a complexion product on your face. And that's something that you're gonna have to contend with if you're getting into makeup, is just feeling that makeup on your face. It takes getting used to. Fenty Beauty also has a great shade range and they have their skin tint that is excellent. And they also have the stick version of these. Now, not the cheapest, but not the most expensive either. So I think these are worth checking out. You know, I've given you various options. There are various ones at the drugstore that you can navigate. But again, I feel like buying different formulas at the drugstore adds up. You're always trying the next best thing and you're disappointed so you go on to the next thing and you end up spending the same that you would spend in a Sephora or on a mid-range brand. So those are just my two cents. So that's your foundation down done, easy peasy. All right, moving on. You wanna step it up. What's the next step? Oh my God, you wanna do blush. Look at you wanting to do blush. You want to add a little color to your skin. Now this is one that I'm not going to limit you because I feel like there's so many great blushes on the market. All these brands have stepped up their game when it comes to blushes. NYX, CoverGirl, L'Oreal, all of them, have really great blushes and you can go in store, 
swatch until your heart's content to figure out a great shade for you. I'll give you shade recommendations though, right? In your arsenal, you should have at least a nude blush. So one that's more on the tan side, a little bit more brownie that goes with your skin tone, all right? So for me, I would go with a brown with a little bit of a rosy hue. So it's gonna look a little bit more pinky, a little bit more rosy, beautiful. It's gonna work on my complexion. I can pretty much wear it with any look because it's gonna be my neutral blush. So this is my everyday blush. It's gonna be more on the natural side. And again, there's so many options. I don't wanna limit you. Sephora collection. I'm gonna keep saying it, right? Sephora Collection, they have such a variety, but the drugstore has some good options too. Then you wanna go with something that's a little bit warmer, a little bit more on the peachy side. I wouldn't say orange, because orange is a little bit bolder, but if you have dark skin, orange is like the way to go. But go for something a little bit peachy. It's gonna match your skin tone again. So lighter for lighter skin tone, deeper for deeper skin tones, you can vary into orange. But a peach blush is going to go with your warmer looks and you wanna offset warm with warm. So warm blush, warm lips, warm eyeshadow. The makeup looks that you do kind of dictate the blush color that you use. So you wanna have a couple options in your arsenal, right? So you start out with nude, then you're gonna go into the peachy realm, the warmer realm, right? And then you wanna also have a cool tone option. So that's gonna be more pinky. So you have those bubblegum blushes. They're on the pinky side. They can be a little bit rosier. Those three options will cover you for the majority of the looks that you go for. And as you get more into it, maybe you'll add to your arsenal, but those are the three shades you wanna go with. A neutral blush that's more on the nude tan side, a warm tone peachy blush, maybe more coral, and then a more pinky cool tone blush, right? That will cover you. And a recommendation for me, Juvia's Place. These blush palettes, I mean, come on, this is your peachy palette right here. Lighter skin, deeper skin, mix the shades together to get your perfect shade match. Like, stop, I love them so much. And they have the options, right? Here is a cooler tone, right? Watermelon shades, pinky blush, goes with your look. Love these so much in the drugstore. Get them on sale, use your coupon. All right, let's talk about bronzer, which is one of the products that I got into way in the end, all right? Bronzer was probably the last product I added to my collection, but I feel like it's a really good makeup product to start out with, right? Before you even get into blush, bronzer, because it helps to warm up your face, it adds some color, and I think it's flattering on anybody. Bronzer, bronzer, bronzer. And there's so many great bronzers on the market these days. The recommendation from me is going to be from Juvia's Place because I think they do such a good job. They have the bronzer palettes just like this that you can use and they have a cream bronzer option. I've been loving the cream bronzer. This is the shade Amber. Really great. I think cream bronzers are easy to use and this is a great formula, easy formula to navigate. I just think a bronzer will step up your makeup look a lot more than any other like blush or highlighter could. So I would recommend a bronzer. Again, the recommendations, Juvia's Place. Honestly, truly, they have great options and they have those bronzer duos again that you can use to contour and bronze little bit more sophisticated technique but i'm telling you a bronzer is kind of top notch it will really bring your look together and i got into it late but i'm happy i did because i love a bronzer now i absolutely love it all right so we did complexion we did blush we did bronzer a highlighter to me is not necessary I said it, I said it. I think a highlighter is extra. You don't need it. You don't need it at all. If you wanna get it, get it fine, sure. But I'm not even gonna recommend that for a basic collection. I think you can skip a highlighter. I know, oh my God, skip a highlighter. You don't need it. You absolutely don't. But you're probably gonna want a lip color, all right? Lips. Again, we start out with lips. Again, lip gloss and mascara. That's like our first thing, right? For lip products, again, this is one that I feel like you can just go, have fun with it, pick and choose whatever you want. There's so many options, high-end, mid-range, drugstore. The drugstore has so many great options available. 
I think L'Oreal makes some fantastic lip products. They have some great slimline lipsticks. Oh, great formulation, satin matte, you can't go wrong. I think L'Oreal, top notch when it comes to lip products. As far as the lip glosses, Maybelline Lifter Glosses. Excellent, oh my God. I love these lifter glosses so much. They're like easy, sheer lip glosses. They're comfy, they're cushy, they feel good on the lips. Lip glosses from Maybelline, lipsticks from L'Oreal. If you wanted some other lip gloss options, Juvia's Place, oh my God, Juvia's Place has such great lip glosses. The newest coffee collection has great nude lip glosses, which is the trend right now, right? Nude lip glosses. Go over there, Juvia's Place is doing it. They also have great nude lipsticks, which I think are fantastic. So we have L'Oreal, Maybelline, and Juvia's Place. Number one recommendations for lip products. Hands down, favorite, fantastic, excellent. If you wanted to get a lip liner, get a nude lip liner. Hands down, easiest thing to navigate. You don't need to vary into the reds and the corals and all that until you really start diving into makeup looks, all right? Nude, easy, that's the way to go. Get yourself something that you can wear every day. Maybe you wanna get a little bit of a pinky hue or a, you know, more peachy hue, but nudes, everybody started with nudes. I started with a nude and it's all the rage right now, so have fun, have fun with your lip products. Then I think you should finish up now with powder. Cause I mean, come on, why not, right? If you have oily skin, you need a powder. Don't ask any questions, you need a powder, a setting powder for your foundation. You're going to need it. Your skin's gonna get oily, you need a powder. I can't live without a powder. In fact, I would get a concealer and a powder and a mascara and that's it if I had to do just basic, basic products. And the powder that I recommend, I have two powders that I recommend. First one up is the Kosas powder. I think this powder, this is the Cloud Set powder. Pricier, pricier, I'll give you that. But again, I don't think the drugstore has anything that quite matches up. I just don't. So I would get the Kosas powder in a shade that works for you. It's a thin powder. It works great as a finishing powder, a setting powder. It won't mattify necessarily, but it's such a great powder and most people love it. I haven't heard a bad thing about this powder, unless I'm just not watching the right people, but dry skin people like it, normal skin, oily skin. So I think the Kosas powder is kind of foolproof. And then I would get a loose powder for under your eyes. The one size powder would be my recommendation. You can get this in a travel size. Don't get the full size. You don't need all this. You don't need all this. They have the travel size, which is like $15. And if you can get powders in travel sizes, that's probably a better, it's not a good bang for your buck, but it's a better price. You know, you're gonna get less product and it's not gonna be value added. But this way you can test out the powders, especially for a loose powder. You don't need all of that powder. One size, travel size, done. Kosas one size. Those are the powders I recommend. There have been no drugstore powders that I would say, yeah, these are great. Cut it out. Don't play with me. Do not play with me. Go for the one size powder. It's excellent. I, I can't say enough great things about it. All right. That's it. That's it. I know there are other products that I could recommend and there are other things that you can add on, but that's it. Brows, mascara, complexion, foundation, and concealer, then a blush and a bronzer, no highlighter, skip the highlighter, skip the setting sprays, skip the primers. As long as you have a great sunscreen and moisturizer combo, you're set. The primers and the accoutrement come later, all right? The fancy shades of lipstick, all of those come later. A very basic makeup collection, that's all you need. Those are my recommendations. A simple eyeshadow palette that you can use for every day, simple nude lips, that's it. You have everything you need. So there you have it. I just wanted to talk you through like building a makeup collection, things to consider, things that I would recommend, products that are tried and true that I know that the majority of people would like and enjoy because they're just solid products. They're good quality and you're not gonna waste your money trying to test out all these different things to find the one that's the best fit. These are tried and true excellent products. So hopefully this video was helpful. The next step would be to build a brush collection, which is a little bit more difficult. Honestly, truly, 
if you want to build a brush collection, Sonia Kashuk. Sonia Kashuk, go to Target, grab a Sonia Kashuk collection of brushes and a makeup sponge from Real Techniques. End it there. Don't even bother with all the other things. End it there, all right? There's just so much to navigate when it comes to brushes. I've done brush videos where I walk you through how to select brushes that work best for you and your preferences and your makeup needs. So I will link them. I will link them down below in case you wanted help with navigating brushes. But this video was just focused on the makeup collection itself. So hopefully you found it helpful, all right? I will list as many of the products down below as I can possibly remember and I will leave links on where you can pick them up. If there's an asterisk next to any of those links, that indicates that it is an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through any of those links. It doesn't change the sale price and it's a great way to give back to the channel because I get a kickback from that sale. So if you use my links, I truly, truly thank you and appreciate it. And if you're shopping online and you wanted to just, you know, go ahead and use my links, thank you so much for contributing back to the content. I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys.